So assume that there are two steel plates that are welded on one inclined plane which has the angle of beta as shown in the figure. We are interested in determining how much would be the shear stress and normal stress along that seams, along that joint line. So in a real world problem, typically weldings are the weak point of a structure and we need to design our structure in order to make sure that stresses along those welding lines are not exceeding the allowable limit. I'm going to solve this problem in two different methods. The first one is without using any stress transformation. I'm just using trigonometric equations and try to find the forces and stresses on the inclined plane without using the concept of stress transformation. So I'm going to cut this element. The force of P is applied on the right side and in order to have equilibrium in the element there should be a force of P on the opposite face in the same direction and same magnitude. This force P would have two components. One of them is perpendicular to the seam, to the welding line, which we call it the normal force. It's shown with N. The other one is shown in green here, and that would be parallel to the weld direction. The normal force is going to be P multiplied by cosine of beta. In a similar way, we can determine how much as V is going to be equal to P multiplied by sine of beta, which is 42.3 kN. Okay, now let's look at these two forces. One of them is perpendicular to this direction, and that means that that is going to produce normal stress. The other one, which is shown in green, is parallel to the cut surface, and that is producing shear stress. In order to determine stress, we need to divide forces by area. But what is the area? Area is going to be the thickness multiplied by the length of that inclined line. So a is going to be A multiplied by T. Again, we can use trigonometric equation. A is going to be B divided by cosine of beta. For normal stress, sigma is going to be force divided by the area that we just calculated. And plugging in the values would result in 102.7 megapascals. On the other side, shear stress is the same as force divided by area. And again, we are talking about the average shear stress along that part. And plugging in the values would result in 47.9 megapascals. This is one way for us to determine how much are the shear stress and normal stress along the weld direction. This method was not very difficult for us to do, but it is not the best way to solve that. Specifically, if we have further forces, say we have a force in the y direction, then in order to determine stresses and forces on that inclined plane, we need to solve a system of equations of two forces and two unknowns, which might be more time consuming for us. But there is one easier way for solving this problem, and that is using stress transformation. We do have the same problem, and first we are going to determine stresses in the original element. Normal stress in the horizontal direction, or the x-axis, is going to be force divided by the area. Area is simply B, height of the section, multiplied by T, thickness of the section. So plugging in the values would result in 125 megapascals. Okay, what about normal stress in the y direction, in the vertical direction? There is no force in that direction. That means that there is no normal stress in the y direction. So normal stress is going to be zero. What about shear stress? There is nothing to produce shear stress on this element. So shear stress is zero as well. Now I'm going to use the stress transformation equation starting from this, say, left surface. How much should we rotate this left surface in order to get to that inclined plane. As we can see here, we need to rotate that by the angle of beta. All right, and beta is gonna be clockwise, and we know that clockwise is gonna be negative. So angle of theta that should be considered is negative of beta, which is negative 25 degrees. Now, let's plug in the values into stress transformation. Sigma n is sigma x plus sigma y over two, plus sigma x minus sigma y over 2 cosine of 2 theta plus tau xy sine of 2 theta. Sigma x was 125 
sigma y and tau xy are 0 and theta is negative 25 and that would result in 102.7 megapascal. In a similar way, shear stress is going to be negative sigma x minus sigma y over 2 sine of 2 theta plus tau xy cosine of 2 theta and that would result in 47.9 megapascals. Now let's compare the answers that we got here with the previous part. You can see the answers are identical. And this method is going to be easier specifically if we have more complex problems where stresses are acting in different directions and we have shear stresses.